our first speaker is actually one of the leading experts on the vice presidency. So if you have any questions about vice, this is the person you want to ask. Everyone, please welcome Aaron. So I'm here to talk about big data at DHS, vast and varied. I'm Aaron Manis. I am a support contractor at the Data Analytics Technology Center at the Department of Homeland Security Director, Directorate of Science and Technology. The director of the Data Analytics Technology Center is Alex Funsavath. Our contact information is right here and I'll show, show you my contact information again. Before I talk about the data analytics work, I always like to ground things with the discussion of what DHS is because the scope and missions of DHS quite simply are huge. 22 components, 240,000 people. We all know about TSA. Whenever I talk about working with Homeland Security, people mention their experience with TSA, but that's only a tiny piece of it. Even the TSA you see, TSA is not the transport, is not the airplane, air traffic security agency. It is the transportation security agency. So what you see is only a part of TSA. TSA is also thinking about how to protect surface transportation all over the country, city buses, trains, mass transit. And that is only one of the 22 components. I just want to give a quick sense. DHS is responsible for securing U.S. borders while for facilitating commerce. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more later. We protect cyberspace and critical infrastructure. That's another way of saying we protect everything. And what we've learned with the pandemic is critical infrastructure isn't just the electrical grid, chemical plants, it's education, it's supply chains. It really is everything. It could be in its own cabinet department. A lot of people don't realize the second largest federal law enforcement agent, law enforcement investigative agency, Homeland Security Investigations, is part of DHS. Their remit is to investigate any crime that crosses U.S. borders. That includes national security export violations. That's a fancy way of saying sending sensitive dual-use technology, say high-tech chips, to somebody that maybe shouldn't have it, like a state that supports terrorism. But HSI also investigates human trafficking, child exploitation, money laundering, international gang activity, just a huge range of issues. We oversee lawful immigration. We are the lead agency for responding to natural disasters. I'll talk about that a bit more in a few moments. I really like to talk about the Coast Guard because they sort of epitomize, they're sort of in miniature epitomize this huge array of missions we have. They are a military agency, a law enforcement agency, a regulatory agency, a safety agency. So they are supposed to protect our coasts, but they also have an environmental protection function. They also rescue boaters at sea. And guess what? They're also the lead agency for the Arctic. Secret Service is part of DHS. We protect the president. And finally, there's the department. Department of Homeland Security, and then there's the Homeland Security Enterprise. The Homeland Security Enterprise means we partner with state, local, tribal, and territorial agencies. First responders, public health, emergency support. Another point I have to make absolutely is that we are founded on the bedrock of treating individuals with dignity and respect, safeguarding civil rights, civil liberties, and privacy protections. This is fundamental to our mission. Every data science project I've been involved with, these issues have been front and center. Now, you're a bunch of data scientists, so I'm sure a lot of you are already starting to chunk some of these problems and see them as big data science problems. For example, protecting critical infrastructure 
you can see that as a big network analysis problem, right? Critical infrastructure isn't just one facility, it's a web of interconnected facilities. And we have to identify the critical nodes and how best to secure them, whether from virtual or real world threats. You can imagine using big, big data analytics to look at cybersecurity data, analyzing web traffic to critical websites. The next speaker I know is going to talk about a natural language pro processing project. And that is huge for us because we generate lots and lots of written reports, which have all kinds of insights and the ability, people can't read all of these reports, the ability to extract meaning from them. Consider the criminal investigate the range of criminal investigations we have, all of the evidence collected, tools that can help us find valuable intelligence and then better protect the American people. Here's the thing. So you can see a lot of our missions as big data science problems, but we are constrained. The first thing I have to say is our core function is anomaly detection. And I like to say anomaly detection is not finding a needle in a haystack. You can brute force that if you have to. No. Anomaly detection is finding a needle in a field of haystacks. Sometimes we don't know what we're looking for. Sometimes detecting the signal from the noise can be extremely difficult. Finding anomalous activity when we don't have a baseline for what's normal activity. These are the challenges we face when we're thinking about illicit cargo entering the United States, when we're thinking about countering violent extremism, when we're thinking about threat assessment. The other thing is a lot of our goals are not subject to easy metrics. Some goals, you know, some goals are, but define when I talk about disaster response, what is an effective disaster recovery? How do you measure that? The other thing is our stakeholders want perfection. We have a very high cost for po false positives. We don't want to get miss. We don't want false negatives. We don't want to miss a threat, but we also don't want to spend time looking at something that isn't a threat. I mentioned DHS is this amalgam of 22 components, each with different cultures, different operating stand, operating procedures, different missions, different worldviews, different concerns. Imagine linking multiple legacy systems. Well, that's us, except that the systems are made up of people. It's a real challenge, and it, the multiple stakeholders requires complex coordination. Now, I work at DHS Science and Technology, one of the 22 components. We are the research and development arm of the Homeland Security Enterprise. We do everything from we, may, we might make critical gadgets, sensors that firefighters or police might carry on their belt. We might be developing sensors to detect WMD material and cargo entering the United States. We identify best practices. And my particular corner, the Data Analytics Technology Center, we're doing big data research to support Homeland Security missions. And that can scope from real nuts and bolts problem solving to big picture cutting edge research. And I'll talk about both of those. One of our big functions, our core function is to help DHS components generate actionable insights from the data they collect. And one of our core functions is we don't, I should say, we are within DHS Science and Technology, we're part of something called HSARPA. We're like DARPA for Homeland Security. We're DARPA without the D. The D stands for dollars. We don't have them. We have to be extremely strategic and thoughtful in the investments we make. One of the best things we can do is look at the data analysis tools that are already out there analyze them, determine if they're a match for DHS components, meets their workflow. And a big part of that, though, is a lot of rarely do commercial products simply meet our unique needs. So it's a matter of really the back and forth between the DHS component, 
the vendor, making it work for us. I should also say that in a lot of cases, we need solutions that scale. We're talking about serving giant government organizations. Sometimes we can hack a small scale solution and solve a pain point, but sometimes we're looking at big picture items that can really serve a whole agency. Now, I want to talk about a couple of specific areas where we operate. Customs and Border Protection. Their mission is to facilitate trade and travel, collect duties on imports, and de detect illegal entry of both criminals and also smuggling. I've got that picture up there of the San, San Ysidro border crossing, but I, if, if I could also show a picture of the Port of Los Angeles, all of the cars, all of the people, all of those cargo containers that we're reading about entering the United States. The vast majority of it is legitimate traffic, and we want to facilitate that. But buried is also significant illicit cargo. This is an enormous, complicated anomaly detection pro problem. How And we've worked on this where we have to sit with the subject matter experts, the agents in the field, go back and forth, identify the signatures of what might be suspicious and what we should investigate further. I want to mention this. Now, there are two particular lessons from our work with CBP and other agencies. One is our subject matter experts know so much, but they're in, they're in the weeds. They are so engaged with the problem set that getting them to abstract, because when you're doing data analytics, you can't get wrapped up in the details. You need to be able to abstract the problem so that we can then do the analytics. And I find that's a huge barrier. It's, it takes real patience. The other thing is, besides the fact that our adversaries are ad adaptive, things are changing all the time, is the data is messy. When you think about U.S. import-export data, we're talking about hundreds of millions of entries, and there's all sorts of noise and mess. The same business registering an import can be spelled 20, 50, 100 different ways. I'm sure you all know this, but the big lesson is your data hates you and wants to break your system, and it sure does with us. Disaster assistance. This is a critical mission. FEMA is part of DHS. This is only going to get worse. We've, with climate change, we're seeing forest fires, we're seeing hurricanes and floods, and now the pandemic is a whole new type of disaster that we have to respond. Disaster assistance involves three bits. There's preparation. That's what we call left of the boom. Before the disaster, what can be done? This is a great big data problem. Can we look at information about a community and identify the most vulnerable points and render assistance beforehand, strengthen them? During response, this is action-packed stuff, triaging information in real time, developing decision support systems. However, it tends to suck all the oxygen out of the room. We focus on how do we deploy helicopters? How do we identify the most critical needs in a crisis? That discussion sucks the oxygen out of the room and prevents us from focusing on the preparation. And then afterwards, recovery. How do you measure effective recovery? There's obvious metrics. Did people move back? Did we rebuild houses? But how do you measure restoring a community? These this is at the cutting edge of where data science meets social science. This is the world where I live. My PhD is in public policy, not nothing mathy. We've got, we've got to get this right because the problem's only going to get worse. Finally, we have a very active program called Scilab. We're doing this with the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure security agency. It is a multi-cloud collaborative environment for cybersecurity and infrastructure security research. Long and short, we've built a play space, a big ecosystem where across multiple clouds, we can bring in data sets, bring in tools, and really run them through the mill and determine if they're going to work for our 
huge cybersecurity needs. We are directly responsible for the cybersecurity of the U.S. government, but we are working with private industry to affect to try and secure the entire U.S. internet. This is a critical realm. Ultimately, we want to we're exploring ways to extend this beyond just DHS, s and and CISA and incorporate the private sector, because that's really where a lot of the action is. These are a lot of our nuts and bolts projects. I wanted to talk quickly about looking ahead, because we do have, we have one foot in the practical immediate. We also have a foot in far, research looking farther ahead. We are heavily involved with these national... National Science Foundation AI Institutes. There's the Future Edge Networks and Distributed Intelligence Institute at Ohio State. There's the Edge Computing Institute at Duke. There's the Dynamic Systems at the University of Washington. And of course, Intelligent Agents for Next Generation Cybersecurity. We're really interested in edge computing. There's going to be a lot of sensors, but leveraging these complex diverse streams of data in real time to support disaster response is a real challenge. And that's one of our big picture items, RAMnets. And this is, which is real-time analytics for multi-latency, multi-party metro scale networks. As we move to smart cities, we're going to have all these varied sensors and they're going to be breaking all the time. And we can't just shut down parts of the city because some of the sensors are down we need in real time being able to assess information, make decisions. And that's why we're supporting these AI institutes so that we can start building that capacity. Let me end by saying you are most welcome to engage with DHS s &T. We have a website. We're on all your social media. You can contact DHS s &T, and you can also contact me. Thanks for your time. Look forward to any questions in the chat.